But pretty much you just fly around and kill guys until the boss decides enough is enough and tries to fight you. Crap, and I'm dead. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousands of My Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Time Pilot by Konami back in 1982 when Konami made video games still. <laughs> uh, this is a very early shooter. Uh, as you can see from the computer demo here, it's sort of like asteroids, but it's based more on planes, of course. So without further ado, let's throw a few quarters in here today. I'm going to throw in four quarters and give it a shot. We're going to be checking this game out, the original arcade version, and also the home Atari 2600 version. So we're starting in the year 1910 AD. I like how they have to specify. Just to be clear, this isn't 1910 BC, uh, in case you were wondering. Anyway, we are flying around in what appears to be a futuristic spaceship of some kind. We're fending off a bunch of sop with like World War One, you know, Red Baron type planes that are flying around trying to kill us. I think we are a time traveler from the future. I like to imagine we are anyway. And uh, we just got to kill guys and fight our way back into the future. I, I believe this game takes place over a series of uh, eras. So if you get enough points, I think you move up to like the 1930s or something, you know. Oh, God, somebody launched a bomb at us. Um, it is the case, though, that your ship does look very advanced for the time period, so, like, it does make me kind of believe that we are in, like, we are some kind of, like, time traveler who's come back, who's assassinating tons of people from the, uh, earlier eras, with no disregard for the effect this would have on the timelines. This person does not subscribe to the Temporal Prime Directive. Uh, oh, nice try, dude. It's cool there's, like, different, uh sort of arrangements of planes that will just show up once in a while, different formations. Oh, we crashed into... <laughs> I wanted to say, like, the Duff blimp. Crashed into a blimp. Oh, now we get to fight in the 1940s. Yeah, we're working our way up through time. I do want to see all the different eras, because I'm kind of curious about how far into the future we can get. So, now there's, like, uh, yeah, now there's, like, military bomber planes. Kind of cool. Okay, so I don't, I don't know when you're allowed to move forward in time. But I'm sure it has something to do with killing enough oh, enemies. So that's kind of exciting. Color of the sky has changed, of course. The 40s were known for having a sky of, ma of a majestic teal color from all the patriotism that was going around at the time, I guess. I don't know, 1940s was in the middle of World War II, so I guess actually there was lots of fear in the world. Uh, and scariness about, like, who would actually win, you know? Like, I mean, imagine living in a world where, like, you know, literally... I mean, people do live in these worlds, um, but, I mean, I, you know, being from Canada, uh, being born in the 80s... In fact, I was born after this game came out, so it gives you a sense of, you know, I'm playing a game that's older than me. Kind of crazy. But being raised in Canada, you know, being born in the 80s, like, I never had to worry about being conscripted. I never had to worry about literally someone declaring war in Canada because who's gonna declare war in Canada everybody loves Canada we're, we're you know we're just the lovable rascal of the world we're out there doing things we're being nice to people people seem to like the way we work in Canada anyway we died do we get to use a continue or is it just like straight up game over oh it is uh, let's enter our name for the ages we did get a high score which is pretty cool um Man, it's crazy to think about uh, waking up in a, a world where, you know, you could get conscripted and you have to go kill Germans and stuff. You know, like, just, just crazy times. But uh, anyway, talking more about this game. So we'll see. Maybe we can get to a very, you know, a distant future level. That'd be awesome. I want to, like, go to the year, like, 2020 and see, see what they thought the year 2020 would be like. Prediction, they would still assume it was a series of air fights. Interesting thing is no matter what year we go to in this game, I can pretty much assure you the level is going to involve shooting enemy planes out of the sky while they try to do the same to you. <laughs> so they had a really singular idea of what the future held in store for humanity. Non-stop aerial combat. Um, a fun fact about this game, by the way, is that the developer of this game, uh, not the programmer, so I, I'm, I think it was probably like the, uh, oh god, the producer or the guy in charge or whatever. He went to his boss with this idea for this game. 
this flying game, and his boss said no. His boss said make a driving game instead. So uh, the creator of this game actually instructed his programmer to make it look like he was making a driving game, but to actually be producing this game instead, which I thought was actually kind of hilarious. Um, oh, we were doing quite good there. I figure probably the reason he got away with it is that this game, Time Pilot here, ended up being a huge success. Oh my god, Time Pilot? I just got the title. Of course this is about a time traveler. Oh man, that's so funny. I'm playing the game like, gee, it feels like maybe your guy's traveling through time or something like that. It's literally in the title. I'm just a little slow today, guys. Bear with me, please. <laughs> Gaming Jay's brain is still booting up. Um, oh, there's a blimp. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh! Can't believe we survived that. Kill the blimp! Oh, we got the blimp! Oh, that's how you pass the level. Oh, and then we travel through time. Oh, Back to the Future style! And this game predates Back to the Future, too. Back to the Future came out in 1985, I believe, and this game was 1982. This game is ahead of its time in a lot of different ways. First, first uh, canonical introduction of the flux capacitor, I assume, because you did travel through time, and you can't travel through time without a flux capacitor. So this game introduced the concept of the flux capacitor, I'm saying, and uh, also various other things in the good old year 1982. Um, anyway, where was I? <laughs> I'm getting, like, totally sidetracked and lost. Oh, yeah, anyway, so the developer of this game lied to his boss. So it's kind of lucky that his, uh, that this game turned out to be a success, because if it wasn't, I gotta imagine his boss would have been far less forgiving. It's always... I, I, bosses don't mind if you disregard their orders and you come out ahead, but if you disregard their orders and come out behind, then they're not too happy, so... Uh, it's one of those things you gotta... It's a fine line of, like, you know, uh... Malfeasance. You know, if you're gonna risk malfeasance, make sure you're a success. It's like uh, it's like that old saying, you know, like uh, if you're gonna lie, don't get caught or whatever. It's sort of like if you're gonna if you're gonna cheat, if you're gonna lie to me and make a video game that I did not order, then it's gonna cost you your job. You damn well better make it a successful one. Damn. So you kind of have like a, a turning radius in this, which makes it a little difficult to avoid bullets sometimes. It's actually it's it's a pretty fun game. Actually, oh god. Pretty fun game, but it also does feel a little bit like... Oh god, oh god damn! It also does feel a little bit like you're not totally in control. Because it's like, sometimes I know where I want to go, but my guy just will not go there. Oh my god. Okay, is this red plane the boss? Oh god, okay, that green plane almost got me. Boom! Yes, it was the boss! Okay, we at least get to see level three. And I got two more quarters! Got two more quarters. Put slamming a bunch of quarters into an arcade game is actually a little bit arrogant because like once those quarters are in you're not getting them back So like people who did play arcade games back in the day. I'm kind of curious how you approached it like My my strategy as a kid would always be to put quarters in one at a time or like eventually when I was older Arcade games started to require 50 cents to play which I thought was ridiculous so you'd have to put in two quarters of time. But basically, let's say you have like two bucks to spend on video video games in the arcade. You wouldn't put that all into one game immediately because what would happen if you put in all those quarters, you started to play it, and then you were like, I want to play a different game. Actually, maybe you could get your quarters back. Maybe pressing that 25 cent thing, it would eject loose quarters. I I don't know. It's been so long since I've played an arcade that I, I literally can't remember. But, uh, I guess I, I'm under the impression you can't get those quarters back. So it does seem a little arrogant to put in quarters and just be like, well, I hope I like this game, <laughs> because if you start to do poorly at it or realize that actually you want to play something else, you're committed. Um, but you don't really have that problem these days, considering all video games are typically played at home. The only place you can really play a video game out in public anymore are those, like, uh, they're not even cyber cafes. They're, like, gaming cafes. There's... Uh, where you like go in and it's you you can like pay for time to play like Call of Duty or whatever on big TVs and they serve you wings and stuff at the same time. Sort of like a it's like a the classiest arcade you've ever been in if you were to show that to someone from the 80s, but it's sort of a business model that's emerging. Another thing is like a VR uh not again, not cafe, but like a VR space uh, where you go and you play like Oculus Rift games and stuff like that because those those systems are expensive and people don't typically have VR stuff at home um oh god the bombs and the, the different kinds of ships in this game are actually crap quite intriguing as well 
Um, because they all have sort of different attack patterns. So it is... It is interesting to try and learn the patterns and make it... Oh my god, through the levels. Man, we have to get through the first level with, like, full lives. Like, losing a life or two on the first level is unacceptable, people. Oh my god. It's so dangerous when, uh... When the enemy ships are behind you. Boom! Alright, that's how you do it. You get up on the tail end of, uh, your opponent. And you just jack him. You fire as many bullets into his behind as you can. Hopefully kill him. So the era after the 40s was, I think, 1970. And then I... I guess we didn't get past that. My hope... Even though we only have two... One life. My hope is we might actually be able to make some progress here. But we're gonna have to see how this goes. Oh, God. Go, go, go! Kill them all! I would like to know, I would love to know why this guy got sent back in time to, like, kill everyone and everyone in the sky, you know, like... What was his penance? What what did he do in the future that... Or maybe he's, like, maybe he's not supposed to be doing this. Maybe he was, like, sent back in time and he's, like, doing it and people are, like, trying to stop him. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, wow. This game takes a lot of concentration to dodge. Boom. We're getting a lot to... Uh, doubling our high scores and stuff because we're killing those bombers. I don't know if it doubles your score, but gives you a lot of points. I can't talk right now because my brain is focusing on trying not to die in this game. Oh my god. Let's save this guy. One thing I, I've learned... Oh, crap! I'm just about to share a cool tip with you guys. One thing I've learned is that it's better to not let a bunch of enemy planes follow you for too long because then they will start to shoot you and that's when trouble happens. So it's better to kind of loop back around and see if you can get the drop on them than to just constantly let a bunch of them chase you. Oh crap, that big plane went away. Oh god. Okay. Oh god, oh, get away from me. Oh, there's the enemy plane. There's the enemy plane. Okay. That's okay, he'll be back. He'll be back. Oh, we got him now. We got him now. Oh god, get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh! <laughs> the bosses in this game are actually not too bad. So this, this has got to be an early instance of having bosses in video games. Because I know in a lot of the earliest uh, games, there, def there, there weren't often bosses. Um, like, what's the boss in Pac-Man? There is none. Like, you know, his own self-doubt, maybe, but, you know, it's a stretch. There's no real physical boss. It's more of a metaphor. You know, Pac-Man's inner doubts are like his biggest threat to his own success. Oh my god, this rock is just chasing me forever. Oh my god, I jumped into a plane. Okay, so in the bottom left, there's a meter of the number of helicopters you have to kill. That, I have figured out, is how you know when the boss is going to appear. But pretty much you just fly around and kill guys until the boss decides enough is enough and tries to fight you himself. Crap, and I'm dead. Damn, level 3 is brutal. So my only hope is that the home version of this game is significantly easier. We're going to give this one more shot in the arcades, and then we're going to see what people at home got to play. But uh, yeah, it, it seems like a solid game, just seems very hard. So I've, I've got to imagine the Atari version will be easier. Usually the home versions of video games tend to be easier than the arcade versions, because in the arcade, they desperately were trying to kill you to steal your quarters. At In the home console versions of games, they usually figured out that people had already bought the game, so there was no need to be that hard on them. But I guess we'll see. Um, another fun fact about this game is apparently there was an N64 remake in production, but I guess it, like, never emerged, so I don't know how far along they got in producing it. But I could definitely see this kind of game could be open to, like, a modern sort of remake of some kind. I mean, you'd, you'd, you'd have to sort of mess with the mechanics a bit and stuff. But, like, definitely there's, like, a core game here. And if you added, like, power-ups and different kinds of enemies and maybe even, like, a map so you weren't just flying around giant open space, then there could be something here. Crap. Ugh, dying on the first level is the worst. It's those bombs. Those bombs actually... So, the trick is if there's too many enemy planes just constantly following you, they'll just fire repeatedly at your behind and eventually take you down. So what you gotta do is loop around them. And those bombs just get me every time. 
Prediction, I'm not making it past the 70s in the arcade version here. But, uh, oh, here's the- here's- we can at least kill the blimp. Sweet vengeance, die, blimpy. We killed, like, the Red Baron. There's, like, a monocle and a twirly mustache and, like, a big cigar. 1910 style, but we got him. Now it's up to us to win World War II by killing everyone. <laughs> including ourselves, apparently. Alright, this is, uh, extra lives are a crutch. They give you the false sense of security. I like to go into games knowing that the next time I screw up for at all, I'm just straight up dead. I like to have no security blanket whatsoever. It's called Hardcore Gaming, guys. Look it up. I'm known for it. If there's one thing people say about my channels, that that Gaming J plays his games hardcore. He's, he is what we would call in the biz a gamer. A hardcore gamer, in fact. I don't know what I'm saying, and I'm dead. All right, well, whatever. Playing games hardcore is for losers. I say we go and we check out the Atari version of this game and see what people who played this game at home got to experience. Ah, the good old Atari. Chip tunes, bad graphics, and a very confusing set of menu options to start a game. I'll be honest with you, to this day, I don't know what all the switches on the Atari do. I just flick them until a game starts. So let's just start here, see what happens. Okay, I think the game is starting. All right, we are now starting. We're playing the Atari game, the Atari version. It's funny, the, the Atari has like, I think it has like four sound effects in its repertoire. And once those four sound effects are played, it's like every every Atari game has the same four sound effects. Like, you're hearing all- you're hearing three of the four right now. Whenever I shoot, you're hearing the fourth. So that's what we got going on. Now, if you shoot too much, your bullets don't go very far, so you do kind of have to, like, space out your shots here. The hit detection is also pretty awful. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I guess it's- it's simulating the experience of playing the game. Uh, the- the arcade game. Oh, there's the blimp. Oh my god. Way easier. All right, now we're in the 40s. So, yes, this- this is simulating the experience of having fun for me. Simulating what a video game might be like. Uh, which is, I think, what- what you can say about most Atari games. I mean, there definitely are some, like, really good Atari 2600 games. I think the Frogger game on Atari is pretty good. Space Invaders is a good rendition of it. There was one game that really blew me away. I forget what it was. I, pff, I mean, that, that sounds sad. Like, it blew me away so much that I don't even remember what it was called. But there definitely was an Atari game back in the day that we played. That we, I played on this channel, even, that blew me away with how enjoyable it was. And I, uh, I'm blank on the title right now. But Atari games, you know, like, they're, they're primitive. I think part of the joy of them is seeing just how primitive they are. Frankly. Oh, there's the boss, too. At least they show the boss as a different kind of sprite than the others. Oh, those guys are shooting at me now. Come on, get them. Oh, God. Okay, I can't line this guy up. There we go. Boom. All right, we're going to get to the... We're going to get to the year 2000 easily. Oh, helicopters. Maybe not. I think that it's like you only have to kill four enemies for the boss to appear because four is the highest number an Atari can count to. Oh, are we dead? We dead? No, we're still alive. Okay. Um, I mocked the Atari in jest, of course, but, uh, yeah. Um, this game, by the way, Time Pilot here, appears in Saved by the Bell, if you ever watched that show back in the 90s. I actually was not a Saved by the Bell fan. I never really watched it back in the day. I found Zack a little... Not annoying, but, like, I didn't appreciate his disregard for school. I wasn't a nerd or anything. Well, I mean, I was a nerd. <laughs> but I was like one of those nerds who did their homework. Uh, I did- I had terrible grades in school. Uh, because I just didn't do my homework, and then... In my last year of high school, I decided I wanted to go to university. I actually started doing my homework and... Got really good grades, so... I went to university. So, like, you know, I, uh... Oh, look at that! We're traveling through time. 1983. Uh, I was alive by this point, by the way, so... There you go. Um, but yeah, I, uh... I was talking about, what, not being a nerd or whatever? Uh, long story short, I found- I found Zack a little annoying, because he's like, he just had no disregard for people. And if you go back and rewatch the show nowadays, it's like, he's- he's pretty, uh, he's got some issues. He's sort of like, uh, 
You know, like, his opinions and stuff would not be looked on well today, so I don't know how well that show holds up, but... Uh, but this game is in Saved by the Bell. It is... Oh my god, I can't believe I dodged that. It is in the... I guess there's, like, a diner called the Max. And that's where all the kids hang out. And... This dine, this game, the arcade version of this is uh, in the diner. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, there's the boss. Can't get to him. All the enemies in this game all like fly in the same direction, which is kind of interesting. Again, I think the Atari just couldn't handle that much stuff. Oh my god! We're now just like in UFO times. This is what they thought the year 1993 would be like. The distant year of 1993 is riddled with UFOs and alien abductions. The United States government has collapsed. That actually- Oh, it's 2001! What? <laughs> so 2001 is riddled with UFOs. Alright, we gotta try this again. Go ahead and flick some switches until the Atari starts. Let's try this again. I think- Okay, so I've learned a few things. One is that all the enemies go in the same direction. Two- Oh my god. Can we just restart? I'm gonna restart. It, we gotta pass the first level or two without dying. And if we can do that, then we'll carry on. Man, the hit detection in this game is brutal. Jeez. Oh my god. I, it sort of seems like the best strategy is to like try and fly just really close and fire a lot because the distant shots are usually not worth it. Although that one actually landed. So did that one. I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't listen to me when it comes to things. Of any kind. <laughs> they can't get that guy. There we go. Alright, forget it. The distant shots are working out. Use them. Get this blimp. Boom! Sniped it. Alright. Into the 40s. See if we can do the 40s without, uh, without dying either. And if we can, then we're in a good... We're in a good position to free the world of 2001 from UFOs. That is one prediction that they got wrong. I'll go on the record and say it. They screwed up on that one. Time... Time Pilot from 1982 wasn't able to predict 19 years into the future. Who knew? Who knew? I expected more from a random Japanese game developer. Um, this game did have a sequel, by the way. Time Pilot 1984, which I, besides the title, know nothing about. I just, when I was reading up for this game, I saw that it had a sequel. And I thought that was very, um... Oh, God! Almost died right there. I thought that was very interesting of them to, like, lock down a specific year. Because when you do that, I feel like your game ages a little more quickly. <laughs> Jeez, that helicopter had it out for us. Just one-shotted us. I guess in the 70s it's supposed to be, like, Vietnam. Oh, God. Like, that's why there's all these, like, Huey helicopters. Huey and Bell helicopters. Those are the helicopters set into Vietnam, right? Uh, they may or may not- that may or may not be right. I wouldn't stake my reputation on it. What would you guys stake your reputation on, just out of curiosity? You know that old phrase, like, I stake my reputation on it? What would you stake your reputation on? Uh, I would stake my reputation on, let's see. What would I stake my reputation on? Maybe Star Trek The Next Generation trivia. You guys like how earlier today I told you I wasn't a nerd? Uh, Star Trek The Next Generation trivia... I don't know. Python coding? <laughs> like, struggling to think, like, what do I know a lot about? I guess the Venture Brothers. Wait, oh my god, that guy flew right into me. Oh, come on, we only have two planes left to make this happen. Okay, no more dying. Starting now. And also, we gotta actually kill some enemies here. Oh my god. Oh my- Oh god! We were, like, flying in, in parallel to that guy for a while. How come jets from 1983 are flying faster than my time-traveling Whatever I'm in. Spaceship thing here. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I think... Oh god. I was about to say, I think this level is manageable, but I just can't hit anything. But I guess it's not manageable when you keep dying! Oh my god. The aim on this craft is brutal. There we go. Get him! Get him! Ugh. I had to dodge, son of a bitch! We're not getting past 1983, are we? Alright, one more try, one more try. You know what, if- if nothing else, at least we learned that in the year 2001, we were overrun by UFOs. 
I'm surprised they didn't make it the year 2000. Because, you know, like, everyone went nuts about the year 2000. Like, they thought it was the end of the world. Y2K bugs and Mayan calendars, this and that. Everything's gonna end. But, I mean, I guess in 1982, when this game was made... You know, they were safe and secure in the 80s. They weren't thinking too much about the year 2000. Are you kidding me? Okay, we're resetting that. A helicopter took a pot shot at me and took me down. That is not how it happened, man. Oh my god. It is so hard to aim in this. Like, so the... Okay, the Atari version is a lot easier than the arcade version because you only need to kill a couple of planes before the boss shows up. But... The aiming in the arcade, and the shooting mechanics in the arcade, is way better. There's definitely games that we have played, like arcade games. Son of a bitch. Reset that, too. There's definitely arcade games that we have played, where, like, I play the Atari version, and I'm like, that's solid. Like, it, you know, it doesn't look nearly as nice as the arcades, but all the core elements are there, and it's the same game. This is not the same game that you would get in the arcades. The idea, the concept behind it is similar, but the controls, the mechanics, the enemies, like everything is just not as good as the arcade, I would say. So, oh my god. Whereas I'm usually pretty forgiving with the Atari because I try and look past all the aesthetic issues and get down to the core idea of, is the game good? Uh, this is a rare instance where I would objectively say that I don't think this replicates the arcade experience very well. If you were a fan of Time Pilot in the arcades, you got this for Christmas, I could see disappointment in your eyes. Or I could imagine that it would be there. I can't see it because I didn't see your Christmases. I'm not some kind of timeless immortal being who plays video games for all ages. I'm just a, just a regular man. Um, just to be clear. Oh god. Yes! Alright, we got that guy. So you kind of have to give all these planes a wide berth, because if they change directions on you, and you're near one, they could, like, fly into you, and then that would be... That, that'd be what we call bad. In the business of video games, it, it would be a bad thing for that to happen. Oh god, like, getting, getting as close as we did there is a little risky. I think. Because all it takes is one change of direction, and then they're flying into you. Why can't I hit these guys? There we go, we got one. Okay, yeah, here's the boss. Let's kill this guy. There you... Oh, God! Okay, well, whatever. Crashing into him created a time dilation effect. That opened the portal, son of a bitch! Oh, that sucks. The helicopters, I honestly find a little challenging. Um, and I think they do fire, like, homing missiles. Oh, my God! Like, like that. I think if we can get back to the year 2001, it's going to be an achievement. I I was really hoping we could see further time points in history. Like, what comes after you? Where do you go from UFO? I feel like you got nowhere to go after UFO. Maybe that's just me. I don't get the helicopters here because they're just freaking difficult as hell. But I think we only need to kill, like, two more of them. And we're dead. <laughs> All right, well... This has been Time Pilots. I mean, I gave it a shot. The Atari version here, it's cool that you can get the farther levels, but honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't think the Atari version is very good at all. I'd, the, it just doesn't simulate the arcade experience. Like the arcade was difficult. I will give you that the arcade version was difficult, but I think it was still well made. And I see that the arcade version you could remake for today. You could have made an N64 version, add some power ups and some different mechanics and stuff, like sort of soup it up a bit. I, th I think it would have held up as a decent game. The Atari version here, there's too many shortcuts. You know, all the planes fly in the same direction. They change direction suddenly and without notice. When they fire at you, it's usually a homing shot, and you it's very hard to dodge. I just think overall, the arcade version, despite it being harder, and I, I didn't get past, what was it, the, the 70s in the arcade version, I think there's more... Uh, learning you could do in the arcade version to up your skill to end up enjoying the game and get far farther, but... Uh, Anyway, those are just my thoughts. What do you guys think of Time Pilot here? I'd be really curious to hear from anyone who played the arcade game back in the day or owned the Atari 2600 version here. There were also versions on the MSX and the ColecoVision, so if you own those ones too, I'd be interested to hear. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think of Time Pilot here? I think actually the time travel mechanic in this game is surprisingly subtle. I mean, they, they do state the years pretty clearly, but 
You know, I mean, I there was nothing sort of time travely about it initially. Maybe the big arcade cabinet had all sorts of references to like time travel and stuff. But it's kind of like a low key time travel game. It's interesting, but uh, yeah, what do you guys think of this game? Uh, is it a game that you played back in the day? Do you have fond memories of it? Do you have tips or tricks? Is there a cheese that you could have done on the Atari here to pass farther levels? Let me know in the comments down below. I love hearing your guys' take on things, your memories, your advice for what I could have done better in the game uh, had I continued to try and play it. But uh, other than that, I hope that you guys had fun, whatever you think of the, the game here today. And if you did, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends and family, get some new viewers for me, and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff, all the stuff that will help my YouTube algorithm, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> and I, I do hope that you guys did have fun. Um, and that's it for me today. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, my friends, peace. Rapping and dead.